does it make sense to now think about these two different types of noise, Olivier? Like, do we should we really think about uh, noise, which is an intrapersonal variation versus across people? It's both, actually. And it makes sense to think about this. And, and you were talking about the difference between noise and you know, between this book and thinking fast and slow. It makes sense to think about this mostly as a distinction between the individual level and the collective or the organizational level. Bias in the psychological sense that Danny was describing in thinking fast and slow is an individual thing, which by the way is what makes it so appealing. We can all recognize how we think and that we have biases in the way we think. Noise is something that happens when you look at an organization or when you look at a person across time. So when you look at an organization where different people should be making the same judgments, but are actually making different judgments, that's noise. When you look, as you were pointing out, at the same person making different judgments of the same problem on different occasions, which is also something that in principle shouldn't happen, that's also noise. There are those two types of noise, which are easy to measure. There is a third type, which we can come back to later, but basically that's what we've been trying to focus on, and that's the difference with bias. And, and yes, I guess these two types of noise happen in all kinds of systems, don't they? I mean, uh, businesses for sure. In the book, you talk about lawyers and judges and medical professionals and I guess university professors. Um, but, but are there certain kinds of organizations where we tend to see more noise versus less? Or is this just a pervasive problem that all of us have to deal with? Okay, so let's distinguish a little bit more between noise within the person and noise uh, across an organization. So it might be that you're in a really good mood on, let's say, uh, Thursday morning, and therefore you're going to make certain kinds of decisions about whom to hire or what projects to approve or what plans to be enthusiastic about. But on Friday afternoon, when you're really tired, you might think all of those are terrible ideas. And there's a lottery depending on which you is making the decision at, uh, at work or maybe even at home. That's within the person. Then across an organization, it might be that a doctor will say, this person probably has cancer and needs a lot of tests. But another doctor who's equally expert will say, this person probably doesn't have cancer and really doesn't need a lot of tests. We know that where you have an organization that has individuals making decisions rather than aggregating independent judgments, there's going to be more noise. And we know when there are groups that are organizations that don't have guidelines, there's going to be more noise. So those are two clues about lots of noise versus not lots of noise. In psychiatry, there's a tremendous amount of noise. In diagnosing strep throat, there isn't a lot of noise, partly because the room for judgment in diagnosing the strep throat for most doctors is very limited. It's more like a calculation. Wherever there is judgment, there is noise and more than you think. But in some cases, uh, some judgments, as Orwell might have said, are more equal than others in the sense that because they're guideline free and you're not aggregating independent judgments, uh, people are going to be all over the map. 